Returning to the Vantage Point video garage, I slotted the rear section of the cage back into place with its new harness bar installed. We'd removed one of the footings in the process, so I temporarily tacked this back on to sit the structure correctly. This was now a good time to review the fitting regulations. Before I actually start cutting some metal and welding things permanently to the car, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the reference points I'm going to um, in terms of the regulations. Now, I never intended my videos to be how-to videos. They're always just me sharing my experience of a project and um, I leave it up to others uh, more qualified to, to suggest how people should do things. And one thing I would say though, in relation to um, the, the regulations, in, in, in relation to motorsport, is try to go back to the source, okay? Because with uh, so many different regulations, uh, everyone makes an interpretation. And when you're going to people for, um, for guidance, you're often going to get their interpretation of how things should be done and that then you will probably add your own interpretation to that and the last thing you want to do is add interpretation on top of interpretation. So I would suggest to go back to the, the, the source regulations as much as possible yourself and, uh, and understand them as well as you can. So what I have here, I've got this <laughs> cool folder actually that we, we found in a French supermarket on our way back from the trip to Germany with the, the leaf back in the summer. I have printed out Appendix K here. These are the homologation papers for the Opel Cadet um, for 1980. And I'm also working, there's four parts to this. This is the yearbook um, which governed uh, motorsport um, internationally for 1980, which is relevant to the build. And the other document that I'm using is um, Motorsport Ireland's regulations and the main part of that is Appendix 2 um, which is the, the, the scrutiny requirements for um, the current year. The homologation papers largely refer to the specifics of the car and would govern things like um, what brake discs you would have been allowed to have on it, uh, maybe uh, carburetors etc. And the, the safety requirements with this would have been governed by the Appendix J of the time, the, the yearbook I have here. Um, if you were building a brand new car, you would use Appendix J um, of the current year. But in this case, we refer back to the, the regulations for this car when it was first homologated. But these are not really relevant to the, the safety equipment, so we can put the, um, the homologation papers away for now and um, then look at Appendix J, which um, is for, for 1980s, it's from, the, from the, the FIA's yearbook. Now, when that's referring to roll cages, um, they have, and in fact, most of the, the, the safety stuff, which this is about, um, it's been superseded. Like, the, this would also have governed what was allowed in those homologation papers, but largely when it comes to safety, this um, has been interpreted and overruled by what they call Appendix K, which is what I have printed out here. And that's what's relevant to historic motorsport safety uh, in the current era. So that's where, um, so when it comes to doing the, the roll cage and stuff, um, the guidelines and information for that are all in, all in here. As you can see, Appendix K is uh, quite a document and is quite comprehensive. Um, one example of where um, Appendix J for 1980 uh, has been superseded by this is, for instance, in relation to the, the, uh, the plates that I'm going to do today for the cage. The, the plates um, welded to the body would have been 2mm back in 1980, whereas it's specified now that it must be 3mm plates. So I've got um, the text here and I've highlighted the, the kind of important bits to me, but there's really useful um, diagrams and you can choose from them your different uh, fixing methods. That's largely what I'll be following for this build, but there are some bits in Motorsport Ireland supplementary regulations which uh, apply to this as well. So I'm going to have to work with those in addition. And for instance, in that case, 
Um, when it comes to the um, the the welded plates, they actually specify uh, an additional plate under the floor. I'm quite happy to be fitting a plate like that on this car because the floor isn't completely flat in some of the sections where the, the plates are going to meet. So actually having the plates underneath is going to help to sandwich and uh, bring the, the floor uh, to the plates uh, nice and flat. Um, the uh, Motorsport Ireland regulations, um, I think when you're doing um, international competitions, the, the FIA ones uh, um, are, supersede that, but uh, if you're interested in doing national events, um, they're, they're the main ones to go by there. So the, the best thing, I, as far as I can see to do, and I mean, that's just my interpretation of it now, as best I can, but the, uh, I, the best thing I see to do is to try and comply with both. From Appendix K, the attachment points of the front and main roll bars to the body must be reinforced with a steel plate of at least 3mm thick with a surface area of 120cm squared welded to the body. And in Motorsport Ireland's yearbook for 2022, it's all pillar fixation mountings must be reinforced under the body by plates of 3mm thickness and at least 1.5 times the area of the mounting plates. My original fixing plates are just under 80 by 10. So you can see there's a nice little ridge just down there. I think what I'll do is I'll go 90 so that's just a bit wider than this footing and I'll go 140 long. So then I'll be definitely over the 1.5 times the, the footing plate. I'll have more than 120 centimeters uh, squared and um, that'll comply with both. Now there's one thing in Appendix J for 1980 which I liked and that actually stipulated that you continue the plate up a vertical surface. Um, so I'm going to put an additional piece uh, welded um, to do the angle uh, to, to strengthen the plate um, along the, the vertical surface so that if there's an impact force down this way, um, it's not just stamping on the floor, it's also pulling against this. There's that recommendation for extending the plate up a vertical surface, and it does actually uh, correspond to a diagram in Appendix K as well. Just one more thing in relation to the homologation papers. I've noticed that later ones have um, details of the homologated cages for the car in them but in 1980 it doesn't seem like they had that at least for the cadet anyway so what I have is I've got a homologation paper just for my cage stating that it's for 1980 cadet that's what allows me to work within these um, regulations from the time that cage complied with uh, Appendix J 1980 and um, if you were to build a new cage now for the car, there's different regulations in, in relation to that. But this is for working with an homologated and certified cage. With all that fresh in my mind, I could get my steel and prepare to start cutting. <laughs> 